Hey, what's up everyone? This is Ergo Josh, and I've noticed recently over the past few videos that a lot of you are making two really big mistakes when it comes to sharing your work online, especially on Instagram. The first mistake you're making is thinking that you can't be successful unless you're drawing pretty girls like these, or drawing characters like everyone else is doing. The second mistake you're making is thinking that the moment you decide to change up your style or maybe do a different subject matter, that every one of your followers is just gonna become unactive, they're not gonna like your posts, and they're probably just gonna unfollow you, and your account will just be dead. Now I will say, disclaimer, those things are kind of true. If you draw a lot of pretty girls, a lot of portraits, you will probably grow faster, especially if you are consistent with it and you don't change up your style or you don't change up what you're posting. However, if you believe that you cannot be successful, that is completely wrong, and I have rounded up seven different artists and seven different Instagram accounts to show you what I mean. I also wanted to give a quick shout out to Wacom again for sponsoring this series. I definitely could not have been doing this video format without them, so big thanks to Wacom. Alright, so let's go ahead and start off with artist number one. So first up we have Laura Price, you probably heard of her here on YouTube, she's very popular and on Instagram as well, she has 121,000 followers so she's doing very well. What I want to draw your attention to is that she's worked for Disney and Nickelodeon and so that means she's worked as a background and character design artist. If you scroll down, you'll notice that you see a lot more characters, but if you look at what happened, kind of not what happened, but what she's posting more recently, is she's posting a lot of environments, a lot of props. So you see these chairs, an environment, a cityscape, more environments, more environments, more environments. And so she's still doing well. If you look at these light counts, you know, 13,000, that's above 10%, which is usually where you want to shoot for when you're looking at your top engagement. So she's getting really good engagement on these posts, you know, because her artwork is great, of course, but she used to do all of these characters. You know, she used to do your typical female characters that you see all over Instagram. And those, <laughs> those even got less engagement. So this is just to prove to you that not only do you not have to do this type of stuff, like she's even done fan art here. Not only do you not have to do that all the time, you can change and people are still gonna love you for it. And why? It's because we have this narrative about who she is. So if you look at the captions, you, she's telling you what she's doing. She's doing studies. She'll tell you if something is released finally that she can talk about if it was on a project here. So if we scroll up here, this was done for Tangled. And so she's always mentioning things that she's done for Tangled because I think that's what she's currently working on or what she just finished. But, you know, we get to see who she is, her development here. She's showing her background and we get to see what she's doing in the industry. And so it doesn't really matter what exactly she's drawing we know she has a style people come here because they like her work and we it's just she just constantly delivers on what we want so that's why she's doing so successful here so i want you guys to pay attention to that again you don't have to draw all the girls you don't have to stick to one thing she's killing it she's selling her merch she's probably making good living with that alone and next up we have john zelestra i think that's how it's pronounced and he's killing it as well 137,000 followers illustrator living in Chicago, what I want to draw your attention to is these comics. These comics are amazing. If you haven't seen them before, I want you to read all of them. They're hilarious. Um, his characters are just so fun. And, you know, the, I feel like this is the kind of content that a lot of Instagram accounts love to try to try to share because it's so easy to get a ton of engagement on it because people read it and then they tag people because they want people to see this funny comic that they saw. Now, the thing I want you to notice about John is you see all these comics here, but if we scroll down, we get into the nitty gritty. We see he's done a lot of characters, a lot of sketch videos. He's been building up to this moment, if you will, and he completely changed. If we look up, it's just comics. There's no individual videos. There's no drawing videos, and he's still getting very good engagement on it. You know, look at this. This is 16,000. That's above 10% for his follower size. So we've seen that he's his media, he's still drawing characters. His his characters are very attractive as well, but he's changed his media type. He's changed from doing videos and doing drawings to doing a lot of finished work. And so that's still getting him a lot of attention. So again, you can change things. Just be respectful of it. You know, he doesn't just spam everything and do random stuff every day every single post but he's on a journey that it's easy to follow him on this journey and i guarantee you the day he wants to release a kickstarter to release his comic for this um athena one i believe is the name of his comic it's gonna be backed in like a day and then it's gonna be like double or triple i guarantee you i'm definitely looking forward to when he releases something like that and a lot of artists are gonna support him in this 
And now we're getting on to the big boys on Instagram. We got Pascal Champ Champon, I think. I'm not sure, but I'm sure you've heard of this guy because his artwork very regularly gets viral and he does all kinds of stuff. He's probably the most diverse, one of the most diverse artist um, accounts I've seen here on Instagram. And, you know, it shows because his engagement isn't always even close to 10%. He's got 10% would be ideally 60,000 likes. But as you can see here, you know, he isn't getting anywhere close to that a lot of the times. So this is half. But why is that? Because he's not really posting the same exact thing, you know. Sometimes an uh, image that really will stand out as the first panel of his little comic series or his painting will get a lot of likes, but a lot of times it doesn't. But what the thing is that about him that makes, that separates him from everyone else is the stories that he has in all of his artwork. It's so colorful and vibrant that even if it's a single panel, it still gets people to connect with him. If you look at his comments, he, he builds a very deep connection with people in this caption. Um, and you can see everything that he's talked about with this and you see the story that he has about being an artist. And so people are going to relate up to this heavily. And the really cool thing is at his size, I've commented on his, <laughs> on his artwork and he's responded. I mentioned how it impacted me and he responded. And so that's an incredible thing to see from anyone, no matter what your account size is. So remember to keep that in mind, engage with people. And especially if your artwork can engage with people in and of itself, that's a plus. And with 2000 posts, you can see that he, there's definitely people who will absolutely adore him. And he's definitely, if he wanted to, I'm not sure if he is exactly, but it, you know, he has a website, so if he's selling his artwork, it's going to sell really well. He's probably at the level where if he were to make a big print of some of his most popular um, paintings, they would sell out like that because he definitely has followers that are like ride or die <laughs> at this point. So, you know, it's all about the story. It's all about the connection. So we're getting even bigger here with Guyez and his his channels, his account is quite different. He doesn't have as much interaction going on via text. You can see his bio doesn't have as much. But what he does is he takes you along in what he's doing and he lets his incredible artwork do the talking for him. So all of his artwork is very cohesive and consistent. Yes, there are pretty girls in here, but it's not about that. It's about the impact of the entire piece if itself. You know, people love this stuff. It, it's like a frame of a cinematic almost every single time. And not only does he have some more cultural stuff, but he'll also bring it down to something that's really, really simple, if I can find it here. Not not visually simple, but conceptually. It's just someone walking through um, what this could be a grocery store he's done, I believe. Let me find that. So here, there's this grocery one, and it's just so, it's really simple. Somebody's standing in a grocery store, but the lighting and the mood is so impactful. And he keeps that up with everything that he does and everything that he posts. And he just comments shopping. So, you know, when you're at his level, you can just comment one word, shopping, and that's it. And I don't even know if he bothered to use hashtags. <laughs> but the thing is, it's his work is that impactful. And so it is true with your work, you can tell a story. You can tell a narrative um, but even then you know he's still going to show you his books he's still going to show you what he's working on when he's doing something interesting in the industry or collaborating with people so he's not just completely cut and dry but i want you to notice this that you know this is one of those accounts where if you take your art to a high enough level of quality and polish um, it's really going to take you far. Next, we have Gal Sheer. He's also very popular here on YouTube. 721,000 followers here. Simple bio. I draw stuff, but he has an amazing website. So check that out if you want. Um, with him, again, he is not drawing any girls, no characters. He's just drawing really fun illustrations on his iPad only. And so how he's capitalized on this, even though he's drawing different things a lot of the times, he's doing really cool, entertaining jump cut videos of his process that are irresistible to watch. I feel like he's got that TikTok vibe with his content, and so he's grown and shot up really quickly. He's like the top dog for this kind of stuff. You see a lot of people emulating Gal Sheer. And if you look at his highlights, everything's laid out. You can see about him, his gear, question and answers. And, you know, this type of content is something a lot of people want to do. They're going to ask a lot of questions questions and he's got all that answered. He's got content for all of them. He's got stuff that they can buy. You know, he's set. So he uses this attention from his videos to grow his audience quickly and he's, you know, every now and then he'll have a post like this and it still does well because his audience is aware of who he is and he doesn't abuse it. He doesn't post stuff all the time that's randomly. He's very consistent with it. But, you know, he's drawing a snail here. 
you know, <laughs> and he's still doing very, very well for himself. So again, don't think that you just have to stick with the pretty girls to be successful on Instagram. So now we're at Ross Tran. I'm sure you already know Ross Draws here on YouTube with the incredible, <laughs> incredibly entertaining YouTube videos. Now, yes, he does draw very pretty girls, very colorful Pokemon kind of style. But I want to show you something here that is really good for you to pay attention to if you want to learn from him. So he's almost at 1 million subscribers. He grew very, or 1 million followers. He grew quite quickly. But if you notice here, his artwork isn't very consistent. He's drawing himself, he's doing kind of a tune me kind of thing, and he's been doing that way before it was a trend. This is just a photo of him and his dog, him and his dog again, different styles of his artwork and his dog again, and random. This is the cover for one of his videos. So he's taking on this really fun journey of just his lifestyle and his creativity that you just can't help but join. Everything is very clear and evident that his style is consistent, and you know, it's, it's very, attractive in the eyes of Instagram, but he's always doing different things. He's doing posts about his book every now and then, you know, it's just post-it notes, but he's still got 17,000 likes and is nowhere near his 10% goal, which for him would be 90 something thousand, but he does it every now and then. And you know, if you have a body like this, definitely utilize it every now and then, you know, especially if you can get a good, really good selfie game, <laughs> you know, it's, he does it in a nice tasteful amount where he still connects with his audience. And so, you want to keep that in mind, even if you're doing this type of work where it's kind of easy to grow because it's what gets a lot of attention on Instagram, you can still provide a narrative and provide a way for people to connect with you and follow you on different platforms. And now finally, we have who I at least crown the queen of Instagram or our Instagram, Loish Van Barl, I believe her name is pronounced. She's at 1.8 million followers, no DMs. Her DMs must be insane. <laughs> and right now she has her Patreon because that's what she's pushing the most. Uh, very simple, but filled out in, in intentional highlights. And yes, she's drawing the girls, she's drawing the characters, but she has a very, very unique style. It's not like the, you know, the popular, you know, Instagram model Pinterest girl face, like you saw in my previous video. And what I love about her is that she may not be the biggest art account on Instagram, but she has the most influence. She is always asking her audience questions, even at her size now, um, always responding to the comments, like so many comments she responds to every single post. She's creating so much content out there to help people. She's been doing this and posting digital art online for years and years and years. Um, I'm actually going to go ahead and show you one of the coolest things I found about her. So if we go over to her website, she has this extremely in-depth FAQ about every Everything digital art like if you're starting out I'm just gonna recommend this to people in general because you know I don't even know how much time this took her but she posted all of this stuff so much content and advice for everything and it goes down and she's just out there helping people so much so it, it makes sense that she has such a respectable influence and she has her own facebook group that's basically like a whole nother deviant art at this point so the connection that she's built here over the past few years is just unparalleled and you know she is drawing a, you know cute girls and fan art and stuff but she's changing up her media she doesn't always post the same thing she's doing traditional ink stuff she's doing digital stuff and she's doing stuff for client work and stuff like that but you know she's connecting with people on just an incredible level doing workshops too and so i really want you guys to take that and run with it when you're looking at what you're doing with your own account so that you don't have to worry about the little things and the details that are easy to kind of be an excuse almost for not really putting your best foot forward with everything that you do so the main idea for this video is to have a narrative with your work. You want a single thread or ideally multiple threads to be continuous throughout all of your work in your entire Instagram account so that people can connect with you. It could be your style, it could be your storytelling, it could be your subject matter, it could even be the journey that you're taking on your own art journey to be in the industry or be independent. Whatever it is, use that to help people connect with you. And I'm just going to be honest, if you don't have these things, if you're still looking every day to have an art style if you still don't know what to draw, you're going to have a hard time. And I recommend you just get to work and just keep drawing and keep enjoying what you're doing because it will come eventually. But if you are struggling with those things, but you want a huge following, it's just not going to happen. So get to work. 
But that isn't to say that you can't post online, it's just that it's very easy to get distracted by all the likes and the comments and all that, so if you can, post and not be affected and just keep your head down and keep studying and keep doing what you love, that's great. But if you can't, I recommend you just don't do it at all so that you can grow at the same rate that everyone else did before all of these social media popped up. Storytelling is by far, at least I, I think it's my opinion, but I still, I'm still going to say it like a fact, but <laughs> it's by far the greatest form of entertainment for us as human beings. They contain emotion and that's how we relate to each other. It's just a connection. Even businesses understand this. Look at Apple with their ads. They don't just have Johnny Ives sitting at a table talking to you about how great the iPhone is and all the nuances of the technology. They put it in different people's hands, different demographics, and showing you how they're using their product in their lifestyle. And over time, that helps you as a consumer connect with them and then you associate that product with a good emotion and then you buy it. So with all this content that I've been putting out recently with the roasts and this video, I've been getting a lot of requests on Instagram, especially for people to review their own individual Instagram accounts or YouTube channels. Unfortunately, I just can't reach everyone outside of what I do for this channel and for my Instagram account. And especially because, you know, the few minutes I would have to kind of give you some random tips is just not going to help you. And I, I personally don't want to waste both of our time with that. So this is why I am relaunching my Patreon page to be a way that I can connect with people who want to get a little bit more serious and who value my two plus years of experience building my own online presence in this art industry, if you will, if there's an industry for, you know, independent artists, but I'm relaunching it and I invite you to check it out. So the goal with this Patreon page is for people to get individual connection with me for critiques or help finding their own way and their own path in social media and helping them find their own narrative. Patrons will be able to book a call with me for 15 to 30 minutes. I'm not sure exactly what it's going to be yet, but they'll be able to talk with me, share their goals, their aspirations, and their current struggles. And then I will in turn give them a personalized video tailored to them with my own personal recommendations, showing the research I've done based on what their own styles and influences are and what people they should look at for who to emulate, because that's a big part of growing. You need to you know, find someone that's similar to emulate. That way you can fast track your growth and success. And so all of that will be done for you as an individual. And then you can just skyrocket from there. But that's not all. People who are at lower tiers will still be able to see everyone's videos and they'll be able to get connected with me through text and connect and ask questions or maybe have some advice where I can actually spend more time with them and talk to them about their own, you know, same thing in struggles, their goals and endeavors for their own art career. Now, I'm very well aware this may sound a little bit like crazy because, you know, I'm not the best artist out there. I'm not the biggest Instagram account. But the thing is, is that the, the growth I've had on the past two years for my channels is not really something you can replicate by just having good art. I have learned a ton of information and I really pride myself on my ability to learn and actually know how to learn for myself. And so I want to share that with you. I want to be able to show you people to look at, show you references, show you examples of who you can be, because I can see it everywhere. <laughs> Every time I see an artist on, especially on my roasting account, I'm like, I could see the pro form, the really, really high level form 10 years down the line of this type of style. And so I really want to be able to help people reach that if they really want to put in all of their effort. So links to everything will be in the description box below. I really look forward to meeting and talking with you, whether you just want to chat with me or get some advice or whether you actually want me to have a one on one session with you and then create a video for you for your own artwork. But if you're not interested, that's fine. Tune in next week for a video where I give a little bit of a walkthrough and demo on how to best prepare your artwork to post online to these platforms and especially where it comes to selling things like prints and merch. So that's it from me. I've been Ergo Josh and I will see you in the next video. Peace.